Oh, hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee here on this Wednesday, the 2nd of January 2019. We only have 363 days left in the year. <laughs> it's already going by quick. Uh, good evening, everybody. Hope everybody had a nice day. This is sort of a back to reality, reality day, back to reality day for most, if not um, all people. Uh, as uh, I try to get back into the routine of things. I think a lot of places won't be at full swing until Monday. Meteorologist Joe Rayo is going to be joining us shortly and uh, joining the live stream tonight. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We've got a, a, some, some new and interesting things to look at. I put up a link there in the chat. This is a very interesting um, and kind of useful site because I've often wondered... Uh, just exactly what did the weather maps look like back in the day and I'm not talking about back in my day but back in maybe my grandfather's and my great grandfather's day and you can actually go back uh, into the 1800s here and I think what they did was uh, they were able to assemble uh, what weather data they have and they ran it through a few computer models and they kind of figured out what uh, the weather the actual surface and upper air uh, must have looked like during uh, the, these uh, events. Uh, so uh, it's great because now we can go back and look at a few uh, places, uh, a few times where things have gotten a bit ex extreme. Uh, Scott Briller uh, pointing out that at least for New York City, uh, four consecutive days where the lows were below zero back in uh, December 29, 30, or 31st of 1917 and January 1st of 1918, which I believe still stands as the coldest uh, New Year on record, and we're going to bring those maps up for you. Mr. Rayo has now joined us. He is so known to have to make an entrance, so I always start these live streams first I always to allow you to make an entrance, Joe. I, I wait for you to do the, the finish your, the top of your seven o'clock report, mm -hmm. and then I thought I'd give you a, you know a certain no, amount of time to log in. But you're so fast on the fingers here. Well, I have everything prepped so yeah. that as soon as I'm done, I sit down and hit the button. Yes. And that's where we're at now. So I was just telling everybody, and I put the link up to that uh, Metro Center site uh, about the uh, the past weather maps. And we're going to look at, I, I found uh, December 29th, 30th, 31st of 17, and January 1st of 18. Right. I also want to go back to a year ago because, and I guess maybe for whatever reason, it, it didn't seem to stand out in my mind, but we actually had a pretty big snowstorm. Uh, right on, on the few days. On, on the third, the yeah. third and fourth. Right, I remember that. I yeah, remember I, that. I, I've kind of blanked it out of my memory. Yeah, <laughs> I remember the cold New Year's Day. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm getting, <clears throat> I'm getting all these different comments from people about last year. I, you know, and I'm convinced that they, 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 they sort of lived in, in an alternate universe with respect to how uh, the winter occurred last year. Last year's winter was a winter of extremes. We had a long cold blast December into January. Some person actually denied that that even happened. <laughs> it's like, are you really? Come on, you, we've got to stop this. You know, there's a lot of temper tantrum, temper tantrums that are going on among the, those in weenie and snow weenie land. Right, right. And uh, you know, us big daddies are here to kind of put, you know, bring some calm into the room. Well, I posted what I had been mentioning on uh, Joe and Joe over the last uh, uh, few weeks. I actually posted on my uh, both of my Facebook pages about the uh, situation regarding December. December ended up with a trace of snow for the entire month. Do not forget, however, that we had about six inches in Central Park uh, on November 15th. But a trace of snow at, uh, in December at Central Park has happened previously 18 other times. Right. 16 out of the 18, we ended up with well, a below well, normal I'm, snow right. state. I'm not saying that 16 out of 18 times we didn't have any snow at all. I, I never said that. <laughs> I said it was below normal. There have been some cases, 16 of those uh, times, where we had like at Central Park 24, 25, you know, come close right. to, the, to the norm. And we're speaking specifically just for New York City with that stat. Just for New York City. It doesn't City. necessarily work uh, outside, of, outside of New York City. There's a number of stats that way we were... That, uh, I went and looked at different spots, uh, Philadelphia, Boston, Albany, and it's it, it's kind of interesting how you look at those stats for New York City, you get this sort of, you, you think you have this correlation. So, when, but, but it just seems to work, it just seems to work in, in with the New York City stats. And, and then you, because you, you look at Boston, it doesn't necessarily apply. You look at Albany, you look at 
uh, Philadelphia, you look at Washington, D.C. Um, so you wonder whether sometimes it's, it's just a string of perfect co you know, coincidences all the way across. Uh, there was another one that was brought up by somebody, one of, our, uh, one of your viewers, I think maybe on YouTube or... Maybe it was Facebook. Hey, no, it was the YouTube. It's John Smith. You're talking John, about the, uh, the, the uh, years above 60 inches of rain. Right. This was the eighth time that we had 60 or more inches of rain in Central Park. And um, the seven times that it had happened previously, a below normal snow year. What made this statistic interesting to me is that prior to 1972, we never at Central Park, and those records go all the way back to the 1860s, we never had above 60 inches of precipitation. Starting in 72, that was the first year, we had over 60 inches of snow. It's now happened eight other times since then. But that's something that's a fairly recent occurrence in the yes. last, like, 40-some-odd years. Which is very interesting, yeah. considering all the, the uh, uh, climate change conversation on the science, on the science side, not the political side. 1983, we had 83 inches of rain at Central yeah. Park. Amazing. Well... Uh, I just want to also mention before we get started, uh, I did uh, I did correspond with Dr. Judah Cohen. He will be coming on next week, one day next week. Just not sure which day, but um, we are um, we. <laughs> We are yeah, we to, are going to have him on to, so we could get into this whole uh, uh, the uh, split of the polar vortex in the stratosphere and what it means. Uh, I think Reaver's calling you out on your d December uh, your January sixth. I I said that we might that maybe we'll have the one big snow for the season or the one the next major snowfall January. Well, let me put it another way. If it had been cold enough this weekend, maybe we would have. But unfortunately, the cold air is going to be absent when. Uh, the, and actually, it's January fifth, right? Saturday, we're going to right. have some rain. It's going to be rain, not snow. So, there you go. All right. Sorry so, um, we also, you know, uh, I want to. We're going to cover when we go get to current weather. Talk about what's going on in the Southwest. It got down to thirty in Phoenix this morning. I'm sure they're not happy there. I have a good um, friend. I, I grew up with in the Bronx, and he moved to Arizona to quote get away from this this cold, wintry scene. Now, this is many years ago, and he did that. But I'm, like, chuckling now because over the last week or 10 days, he's had a few inches of snow and, again, very cold temperatures. So this is the map uh, from December 26, 1917. I guess the, that, as they've been able to reconstruct it. So the color, the, the different colors there are uh, when you look, when I show you those jet stream maps with those height lines. Right. Okay, so they, they're represented by the colors. So obviously you can follow, you can not only have the surface plot over it, but you can see what the jet stream flow was. And you know, you have, you have this nice looking vortex sitting in e east of Hudson's Bay, big high, a big surface high uh, in Western Canada. 1051, that's not too, uh, too shabby. No, not at all. And uh, I'm gonna move this along. Actually, I'm just gonna shrink it down one size so this way we can leave the date up and I can uh, advance it at the same time. So let me just make sure it looks okay on the frame. And I get a little better. There we go. So uh, this is when you look at these upper air maps. This is this is a way that you get some of these colder air masses to come down. Is when the the, the uh, jet stream just flex, you know, basically flexes, and you get a, a deep trough that uh, heads over into uh, the eastern part of the uh, U.S. And I'm going to jump, I'm going to have to do this, uh, we'll just go day by day, might be a little faster here. So here it is on the 27th, is it loading? That's it, go. Okay, so here's the 27th, so you can already see that there's this deep upper trough that's rotating around uh, one high up in southeastern Canada, there's a low over Lake Superior with an Arctic front, and now here comes that, you know, big uh, high. And starting with the uh, 28th, uh, we had below zero readings in New York City and four days in a row of it. Uh, if you, you know, when you look at the upper air, it's not like you had this big, deep plunging jet going all the way down, Joe. You just had a really bitter cold surface high that came down. Right, 1054. Wow. And now we'll go to the 29th. And there's the you know the, the 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 upper air again. You see where the trough is sort of broad trough here in the east. That high coming in. There's a low that forms well offshore. So 
it looks like it just probably came in as cold and dry and now we're at to the 30th and the high is kind of sitting right overhead looks like it's weakened a bit but uh, again I you sometimes when you look at the upper air you expect to see the sort of deep trough going all the way down it doesn't always just have to be that way in this case it was just a bitter cold surface well, high. You, you take a look at the uh, the surface winds are coming out of the north northeast and the upper level winds seem to be coming also from a similar direction from the north northeast and that's our cold wind for this particular part of the country you see the winds blowing more or less from the north uh, in the winter time and that's when you're probably going to have your coldest or some of your coldest uh, air during the, any winter season. And there's some kind of a little blocking high that's sitting there east of Greenland. So that, that you did have some kind of a block in place here to, to force all that cold air <clears throat> down. This is on, on New Year's Eve uh, and then on New Year's uh, on January 1st. Uh, I don't forget okay, when you got to really change years. Change the years, 19, yeah. January. Scroll back up. One. And there's January 1st, with the high still uh, weakening in eastern Canada. We still had uh, below zero temperatures. So, but a very, very deep uh, northwest southeast tilt to that trough there. Right. Uh, so you do have you did at least you, you know you do have a, a very strong uh, jet <clears throat> from Canada uh, pulling down that cold there. It's kind of interesting to go back and look at these things, Joe, because like some of these uh, big events that have occurred in the past, and I was t telling the, the the folks earlier. I've often wondered, well, what, what were they looking at on the, what did the weather maps look like? Well, now, uh, I guess whatever algorithm they use to figure this out, yeah. it, it probably comes pretty close. Right. Now, as I mentioned earlier on the, uh, the, the, NOAA actually has a library of all of the weather maps. And of course, if you're a big fan of the uh, uh, daily and weekly weather maps, and maybe some of you are even still receiving those in the mail, in, uh, via snail mail, they apparently have every single copy and somebody actually scanned every single one of those maps going all the way back into the 1870s you can go and see that but you also have to uh, get a special kind I think it's good they call it deja vu which is kind of similar to uh, Adobe format but right. unle unless you have that deja vu on your computer you won't be able to read those maps but those would be the actual maps and they did not have uh, earlier than let's say the mid 1950s um, any representation of the upper air, as Joe just mentioned, whoever did this must have read. Yeah, they must have used some models. They threw the data yeah. in and just you know figured it out. Right. Well, now we've got. <clears throat> la I went to last year, ja uh, January third, uh, where we had just had <clears throat> a bitter cold high pulling out. Another Arctic front is approaching with a high coming down. It, temperatures were really cold uh, up and down the east coast. I mean, you had twenties. Uh, this is at uh, ten o'clock in the morning with temperatures below freezing all the way down into northern Florida. I mean, this was a really extensive cold air mass right. that was left over from New Year's. And now we've got this coastal low that is uh, moving up. And here it's easier to advance. Uh, but uh, you uh, wind up with uh, this system just exploding when it got to the North Carolina coast, right. 972 low, and it deepened down into the 960s. In fact, even under 960 here, uh, when it was uh, on uh, at, at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, January 4th, uh, snowing uh, looks like a, a lot of moderate to heavy snow observations going on uh, up and down from uh, southern New England down into uh, New Jersey and Delaware. This was this was quite a storm. I mean, it only produced about 10 inches in New York City only, <laughs> uh, which probably means again I have to go back and look, but I'm guessing that for where I was on Long Island, probably uh, every bit of a foot and a half out of it, because uh, I always wind up doing much better. Well, if I recall, you and I were at the hotel with this uh, with this storm. With this one? Yeah, I I do believe. Yeah. All right. I uh, boy, I'm going to be sixty in a couple of weeks. We had we had. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember. <laughs> I, can't, I I don't. You know, I'm having a tough time remembering this storm. And you know, something will trigger it in my memory. Look how deep it got, Joe. It got down to a 950 low. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, and it's still at this point, at, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, still seeing snow observations, moderate snow observations back through uh, New Jersey, New York City, uh, Long Island, and, and, and all through southern New England. And, in fact, all the way up even into coastal New England, uh, up through Maine. Right. Just uh, This was a... a, a I got to go back and look at all the, um, the stuff with this because I have to get my memory refreshed. Very 
Very formidable, or is it formidable? Well, I don't even. I know like formidable. You like yeah. formidable. Uh, I don't um, like either, well, either one. It could be imposing. Yeah, that's it, a good word. Yeah, the, uh, the that system, and for a long for the longest time, we were thinking that that would be the biggest storm of the season, and then came March. Right. And uh, boom, 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 boom. So. And uh, yeah, five inches an hour for three hour, for almost four hours. Where I lived on that last storm in March. Here's the current surface map, uh, which is a far cry from where we were a year ago. Uh, it's amazing how uh, you get this happening a lot where one year at, you're at one extreme and then the next year for the same dates you're kind of at the other side of the equation. Right. Not that it's overly warm. I mean, temperatures today were pretty close to average, maybe slightly above in some places. Uh, but uh, weak high up to the north. We've got a very, very weak system that, that is going to be impacting our weather tonight. Uh, and I'm not really looking for very much, Joe, except for, you know, uh, uh, between about 11 p.m. and say 4 or 5 a.m., right. a little light precip, cold spots. It's one of those deals, though, where it's actually colder as you go north and east rather than north and west. So mm -hmm. uh, it's quite conceivable that from central and eastern Long Island and through Connecticut with some of this light precip winds up uh, making the ground a bit slick in spots. And, and, and yet at the same time, in places like northeast New Jersey, northern Pencil northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, the temperatures there are actually warmer. Well, so, the temperatures may actually rise a little bit in the late night hours, but just for sim to be s for simplicity's sake, um, I said uh, earlier uh, this afternoon that all you have to do is just remember what happened on Christmas Eve morning, that Monday morning a week ago when people woke up. Some of you looked out your window or stepped outside. The grass was white. The top of your car was white. If you have a deck... A wooden deck that was probably coated with snow but everything else was more or less wet and that pretty much looks like what is going to happen in most areas tonight um no big deal don't think you'll have to worry too much on the roadways tomorrow and route to work and school but colder surfaces in some cases may have a little bit of that slushy snow uh we're going to go to the switch to the temperature map i want to go down to the southwest where it has been unusually cold. We, we've been saying, you know, this cold air that came down a couple of days ago up in the northern plains uh, really drained more south and east and west of the Mississippi. And uh, there are some winter storm warnings up, and a lot of this is for ice up in parts of north central Texas on up into um, Oklahoma, temperatures uh, around or just under the freezing mark. But uh, skewing up, before I go to the southwest, just to show the big temperature changes in the Dakotas, where a lot of these spots were down double digits below zero, and now they're back to double digits above zero, and the warm-up is going to continue there. Uh, meanwhile, where the core of that cold air settled, if I get this map to move a little bit, uh, we're still really cold down in New Mexico, even down near El Paso is at just a barely above freezing. Temperatures uh, in and around Tucson uh, late this afternoon somehow struggled back uh, to be over 40. Phoenix was 30 this morning as we said they've got freezes uh, uh, freeze warnings, hard freeze uh, meanwhile New Mexico which was uh, uh, winter storm warnings all over the place, now that part of the equation is uh, is done and uh, we're seeing uh, all those warnings and, and advisories, being, advisories being taken down. First time in, in about six years for parts of Arizona that they've seen as much snow as they've had over the last few days so uh, this, this does not happen for them very very often no, uh, just up in the northwest, the next weather system coming in uh, with uh, some advisories and warnings there. Uh, I've seen some print amounts in the, in, on the Weather Service forecast maps up in the Pacific Northwest of 40 and 50 inches up on some, you know, the mountain the Cascades, tops up in the Cascades. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got some flood watches up uh, from uh, parts of southeastern Texas and then on up uh, northeastward from there as uh, rain is getting involved here with the, uh, with the stalled uh, front boundary. Here's the look on the radar this evening. I'm going to freshen this up a little bit. And you see for the Northeast, Joe, there's just, you know, this is one of those situations. You've got this northern stream feature coming down. You've got this southern stream feature coming up. And, and you know, we've seen it happen sometimes where the north gets involved with the south and, and you wind up with a blossoming area of precip. But we've also seen, like we're going to see in this case, where the two streams never really get together. You've right. got a weak north, a weak south. Somebody in between the two is probably not going to get much precip, if anything at all. Uh, this is really a non-event, in my in my view. Yeah, it's just, uh, it does not look like uh, very much to uh, write home about. 
By the way, so, uh, uh, somebody, uh, I, po I posted, in fact, that for tonight, and somebody posted, well, if it was 12 inches of, of snow, then would you write home? Yeah. <laughs> I said, most definitely, I probably would. <laughs> but this is not 12 inches of snow. This is just a few showers of rain and wet snow, which pretty much will be gone before daybreak. And by midday and afternoon tomorrow, the sun will be out. There will be a bit of a west-northwesterly breeze, and temperatures may even rise well up into the 40s to near 50 for some spots. Now, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's still a ton of rain back uh, westward. And of course, it's freezing rain uh, in parts of Texas where they have the winter storm warnings up. Uh, this There's going to be another low that's going to come out for uh, late Friday night and Saturday with rain that moves up uh, the uh, seaboard and gets to about us. And I think it's setting up Saturday to be, at least for us, a, a really kind of gloomy, raw day. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of those much ugly of day. days. Much of the day on Saturday. And uh, Sunday, it uh, looks like it'll be a better day with brighter skies and drier conditions. And uh, there you go. Your first uh, weekend of 2019 looks to be a 50-50 split with the better part of the split probably on Sunday. All right, so uh, why don't we... Uh, Which is the little Christmas, by the way. That's correct. Uh, I've got the parallel GFS, which is kind of out in pieces. <laughs> so we're going to make do with it. Uh, I'm, we're going to go through this, okay? Uh, I will, again, remind everybody uh, that these maps are courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com, uh, your go-to site for the best weather maps around of just about every model you can think of. Uh, I would also, again, a caution... Uh, this is one snapshot, one model run uh, in this process that we're watching evolve. Uh, we None of us know where it's going to wind up. None of us know uh, how cold it's going to get. Uh, is it going to get uh, where temperatures are only maybe normal or a little bit below normal? Or is this polar vortex split going to be producing something uh, greater? Uh, this is a process that we are all in it together. We're going to watch this all evolve in the next coming weeks because uh, Joe and I think you would agree with me pattern changes are long grinding processes they are not um, light switches where you just come in and just right. throw the switch and now all of a sudden uh, you go from one pattern to another it's looking and I showed you earlier today uh, the uh, uh, the European ensemble 51 members make up the uh, European ensemble and it seems that we may have a couple of modest shots of cold weather uh, in the coming next uh, couple of weeks. And then everything came, seems to go zonal and flatten out. And uh, if you're looking for something really, really cold, it, it seemingly may not come our way until, again, if you believe the, the ensemble, latter part later this month. Right. Or maybe even hold off until the beginning of February. Well, you know, we've, we, we've gotten into this <clears throat> mode. And that's just one model, by the way. So, we, you know, the European has been no great shakes lately on a number of levels. Uh, but <clears throat> on the other hand, we have seen different model runs produce different outcomes. I think the common theme through all of this is the fact that the polar vortex in the stratosphere is splitting. And the strongest part of that split seems to want to come into North America and sit there for a while. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to have longer term implications and we still need to give the models time to react to this. Uh, one of the things I want to ask Dr. Cohen when he's on here is that you know, does, do they operate, do, do the models react to these things independently? Uh, is the stratosphere doing its thing, the, the bottom of the atmosphere doing its thing, uh, and, and, and does this cause the, the models to have problems hmm. when, you have the, um, when you have the atmosphere stre sweat stretched out to uh, extremes? We did see issues like this last year back from mid-February to early March, I think that's what we're seeing again. Well, sort you of said this, uh, this, this adjustment of period that's that's happening. A few minutes ago, you said how, how it's amazing how different this year so far has evolved as opposed to a year ago. Well, February last year, you remember, was so very warm. Maybe it might be that this is the year that February is going to end up being very cold. Maybe we'll have one continuous shot of cold weather through the month of February. Maybe the... the uh, powers that be in the atmosphere just holding back and waiting until we get to February. Could be. And then all of a sudden, everything Boom. just breaks loose. All right, so here's our week system for tonight. Uh, we've got this next round of rain, which looks to be uh, sizable for the Gulf states and the southeast. Uh, probably some places are going to wind up with a couple of inches out of it. Uh, there's a nice little low here that develops and moves out, but doesn't really intensify very much as it gets kicked away. 
And as you said, you know, kind of a modest shot of cold air for next Monday. Another system comes along with a cold front. Uh, some snows up in northern New England. Uh, that goes by. Little shot of cold air behind that. Then we've got another cold front later next week. Uh, now we're at the January 10th, 11th. And on this particular run, it, it does show some kind of weak low going by underneath us with a little bit of snow. Who knows if this is right, Joe? Uh, what is that now? What, how far ahead are you looking? Now we're at no? January 13th. Oh, I January mean, at this 13th. at this oh, point, well. you know, we're we're in that model. You know, the the the, fa- the fantasy land where the things start really the variations only, get wider and wider. It's only eleven days out, right? <laughs> and then, but one thing I am no, you know, one thing I am noticing, Joe, you are getting fronts coming down with right. shots of cold air. Right. And you know, perhaps each one will be a little more impressive than than the, than the latter. And now here we are, January seventeenth. Right. I, that's why I just really like to look, rather look at the upper air uh, through all of these things, uh, rather than focus uh, more less and focus less on the surface, because we know all of this is going to change to some degree. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of the parallel GFS here with this upper flow. Let's go. I'm running the atmosphere backwards, which is always fun. Yeah. Um, you know, you do have some blocking that's out in the east northeastern Atlantic that uh, tries to push toward into Greenland, uh, and it some runs it happens, some runs it doesn't. We're at, um, you know what? Let me get the tighter view. This is too big. Uh, but here we have, um, you know, the eleventh. I mean, you do have. The overall look across Canada is changing from what it is now. Mm-hmm. As we get toward the the, uh, the 12th, the 13th, at the middle part of the month, you're, you're starting to get some kind of polar flow from northern Canada down into the Great Lakes and, and into the east. It, it, there's much more of a presence there than, than what we've seen. The Pacific is also changing to a large degree, which is important because the Pacific has been a big mess, shooting this, this fire hose jet into the west coast and running that warm air across the U.S., that looks like it's getting cut off here to a large degree. Or pinched off. And pinched off yeah. in the longer term. Uh, run it by, it. you know, not, this, is, this isn't too shabby with the shots of cold air. And it looks like another rearrangement going on later in the period. So we're still, I, you know, the bottom line is we're still in the process. I don't think you would disagree big, with that. That big Baja low that they... Uh starting to form or starting to develop right well this is this is in the land of day 15 17 yeah so we know we know it'll we know it'll be there every run from here on in well when i you know over the years whenever you see something like that they cut off and what happens is that you say all right when is that thing going to emerge when is that going to come and you know what happens instead it, it kicks off little pieces of itself you get like two or three pieces that get bumped up toward us and then finally the main mama comes up right some sometime later on so it's uh now that's now this this flow now is this, this now we're at the eight. now we're at the stratosphere right we're at the fun part okay right. so let's let's review folks uh, this is uh, Sunday December thirtieth uh, the polar vortex getting stretched uh, yesterday was um, happy polar vortex split day the split is done and what happens is that the polar vortex just kind of settles well you get two of them you actually have three centers here but yeah. There's two distinct centers and a weaker one in Asia, but you've got one in Europe, you've got one in uh, o- o- near the Maritimes, right. and it's the one in the Maritimes, Joe, that winds up just kind of meandering over the eastern part of Canada and Hudson's Bay and gradually gets stronger as right. we go through the period. This is, what I'm, this is what I'm talking about about later on in the month of January because it seems to be getting stronger, and it seems also now cold air building up over the Yukon, over the northern and western sections of North America, which eventually, will, after a while, it's, just, it's like the roof collapsing right. and caving in. All that cold air eventually is going to have to go down south, and that may very well happen later on, later on in the month. So, so, so I guess the way to look at it is like this. If there's a 10-day to two-week lag between what happens up here and what happens down, down at the ground. So we just had the split yesterday. So uh, this at this point, we've got, this is for uh, tomorrow night. So I just kind of moved it over a day. So you, we, could, we, 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 we may be able to say that uh, 10 days to two weeks from this point, which takes us to roughly the 13th to the 5th, 18th, we are going to have some polar flow coming down. And as we go 
now as each day passes, the, that polar flow uh, intensifies. And it gets to its strongest on the 18th, which is as far as this, this goes. So assuming this is right, as you said, uh, perhaps it means that around the, the 28th of January till the first few days of February in that window, um, there might be some really bitter cold air right. aiming to come down. Right. Uh, but the general pattern starting in about, you know, will start to gradually, in, I think, intensify in terms of these cold shots of air. You get these first, at, at first they're glancing, then you're going to get one that's probably going to last more than a day. Right. Maybe it'll last uh, a couple of days, three days, and then you're going to get one that's going to last for quite a long time. So right. again, it's that long grinding process. Um, I, I'm going to be very. This is this is one of the you know I've been over the last couple of years, sort of often off and on paid attention to the what's going been going on at this level. Uh, I've spent more time on it this year, so I'm really um, and, I'm really anticipating learning. You got all this going yeah. on this this right. this big event in the stratosphere. What are going to be the practical impacts? And we don't know. And and the other thing is, Joe, is that uh, you will. You won't reveal it to our viewers, but I will. That this huh. man is this man is silently suffering because of the uh, partial shutdown of the federal government. Because we the thing can't that he see most, the darn teleconnections. He wants to see his teleconnection map, and he hasn't been able to for almost two weeks now. And that would certainly play a, a role, maybe in your thinking, Joe, as to what may be happening sometime down the road. But you can't see it because, again, that part of the government won't allow you to see it. Well, you know, really if the shutdown ends soon, we uh, will get the maps back. Right. Uh, in the meantime, we're just going to have to use do it the old-fashioned way. Right. Yes. Uh, ex exactly. <laughs> By the way, uh, I went and re I read. I, I did actually go read Dr. Judah Cohen's latest blog, which is you know, he's it's stuffed with a lot of stuff. I had I read through it once, then I halfway read through it a second time. You know, I'm trying to sort of glean things. There's there's some of it I understand. Some of it is above my pay grade, right. you know. But I'm right. gradually trying to absorb all this. But there was one very, you know, there's a very interesting point that he made, uh, and I, we, I, I talked about this last night, but I'll bring it up tonight because we might have some new people on. Uh, and and uh, the, that point is this: uh, each weather, whatever weather pattern you're in, they. When they last, after they, if they're, if they're a, a pattern that, that, that lasts for a while, it basically plants the seeds of its own destruction. A very, very warm pattern, like we're having now, was necessary in order to create this uh, circumstance of the polar vortex splitting. Right. So right. if you didn't have the extreme warmth someplace, you would, you would not have the resulting split and the compensating extreme cold that you would have someplace, you know, someplace else. I'm not, I mean, I don't really particularly think that the weather that we're having right now is anything close to extreme. No. It's in terms of, warm, of, of oh, we warmer than normal. We see warm. much warmer than this uh, and lasting for much longer. Uh, so, uh, but the point is that what's happening upstairs, it, it needed to have this, this warming uh, setup. Uh, to get that warm air up and split the vortex in two. And then you're going to see the outcome, which will then reverse what we're having now. And, right. you know, and if you think about it, it really it makes absolute sense. Without the warmer pattern, you would not have the colder pattern ahead of it. It's sounds... uh, uh, after it. Right. And vice versa. And vice versa. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, trying to think. There was something I wanted to show everybody also uh, with what's going on. And now I've kind of forgot. I've been doing a lot of that lately, Joe. I think it's because my 60th birthday is coming up. And make sure you send a card, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm sure on that particular, was it the 27th? 27th. 27th. It's a Sunday this year. Oh, okay. Uh, which, is, which, is, uh, which is very cool. So let me, uh, let's go to the chat board uh, to see uh, if we have any questions, uh, comments, uh, I know they're talking about the lottery winner over in uh, over on Long Island that won uh, a cool four hundred and fifty million dollars. Isn't that lovely? Well, you know, I was asked to play the lottery yesterday, and I said I cannot pl I possibly play. I cannot, you know, it's the burden of money. I just, you know, I always look when they when they announce the the winning numbers. I look at the numbers and I I say to myself, you know, sometimes I'll say, 
Oh, uh, 14 was the Powerball number uh, yesterday. Really. I said 14, I said, oh, that's Gil Hodges, because that was his number when he was managing the Mets. I would say to myself, wouldn't it be wonderful to know, not the numbers, but just simply have somebody come up to me and like whisper in my ear, Gil Hodges and Art Chamsky. Yes. I remember a lot of those numbers uh, from, from way back when and automatically know the... Uh, uh, the winning set, but uh, Jess Harden, who sits in Alabama, and every night he asks me if winter is coming to the Deep South, and I will just say to you that you just need to watch this whole pattern evolve. I think you know you're you're asking me a yes or no question. Hey, if it could happen in the desert Southwest, for God's sake, it certainly could happen down in the Southland. Well, yeah, there's and, a, there's a good that, that that's a very good point. And and if if indeed what we just talked about. If the cold air, the really cold air, waits until later this month or the month of February to come pouring on down, you'll get your cold air um, in, in that type of a pattern. So we'll see. By the way, another 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 point, and you and I have talked about this, um, and I I want to I, I want to maybe when I get some time one day, I'm going to go in and, and look at a little data and see what what the story is on this, but um, it certainly seems like. Uh, autumns are starting later and lasting later. Winters are starting later. They, they, you, you've mentioned many times how you remember the December in the, the December's in the right. '60s where there was a white Christmas here almost every year, right. and then just an absolute absence of, of those white Christmases right. uh, in the next 30 years. We've had a few peppered along here and there, but the, the the point being that we've had a number of winters in recent years that really haven't didn't really get started until the middle part of January and then we're all sitting here in March and early April wondering when is winter going to end and 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 that you know this 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 winter may be playing into that because of the split happening now right. and the timing uh, would probably mean that what what we call winter I guess everybody's equation of winter is that you're you're basically locked up in an, in an igloo wrapped in a parka, right. you know, with a snowblower nearby because you've got snow up to the roof of your house on a daily basis. Right, and you mentioned also that in terms of this winter, we're due because the last six winters we've had above normal snowfall, and we've had uh, right on the winter. other side of the equation, right, right. a subnormal winter from right. for snowfall. And I did look back, and I found that at Central Park again. Here's the Central Park equation. I use Central Park because they have an elaborate, long-term... I mean, many of these places that we have, like Islip, for example, or Newark, or LaGuardia, I mean, they go back 30, 40, 50 years. Central Park, for goodness sake, goes back to 1869. Right. You cannot help not looking at Central Park. And in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, each of those decades, on average, had two above-normal snowfall winter seasons out of 10. Right. Each decade. So each decade, the decade is 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Out of 10 years, two of those years were above normal. Suddenly, once we got to 2000, 2000s, and now the 2010s, we've had, out of 10 years for a decade, seven. We went from two above normal snow years to seven on average at Central Park since the beginning of the 21st century. And we've already had seven right. so far this decade. Right. We've so, only had one below right. ab- 11, 12. Right, right. So maybe it's time. Maybe this, you know. Could be. And, and, the, and the, snow, the snow weenies or the snow lovers out there are, you know, really upset. But, you know, you can't have it every year. You can't have it your way every single year, every once in a while. And, indeed, six years. This would be, if it happens this year, it's once in a great while. Yep. That, Mer- we th- that we had a below normal uh, Mer- Mertha Gunter, who's one of our regulars in Western North Carolina, asks, "Are there weather systems that flow from the South Pole, or is that not the case?" And well, I mean, the the uh, as the weather systems go, the polar regions that that uh, on the North side works the same way. Right. On the South side, right. we don't pay a whole lot. Uh, we honestly don't, hardly pay any attention uh, to what's going on there at all. I don't even think. I I, I don't believe that there is. Well, do they get their cold shots? Let's say if you live in Australia. No, they come Tasman- yeah, The cold shots Tasmania. come from, from, from Antarctica. Right, so the, their cold air comes up from the south. The south, <laughs> correct. So I, I'll just pull up this global map. Is probably Actually, you know what? The Australia... See, it's summertime there, too, so you're not going to see many weather systems getting that far north. Right, if you live in a place like Melbourne, Melbourne, 
I was once corrected by somebody from Australia say it's not Melbourne chap it's Melbourne Melbourne Australia or Perth Australia um, in the summertime they're hoping for a nice little batch of cooler air coming up from the south yes in the same way that we wish for a little bit of cool air in July or August coming down from Canada from the north so I, I pulled up this global shot I'm gonna to try to make it a little bit bigger Martha so hang on one second here we'll make it a bit bigger let me make sure it's centered so you can see it. So Antarctica is at the bottom. Okay, hang on. Now I got to now I got to put it on the screen. I got to find it, Joe. I lost my window. There it is. All right. Now get us off. <laughs> uh, yes. Here we go. So to speak. Easy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I can't see it because you know I'm because I'm because I hold on. Here we go. Ah, there we go. So there's the uh, Antarctica there on the bottom, okay? So I'm going to just run it back backwards. Whoops. I'm running it backwards, okay? <laughs> Don't freak out. I, didn't, I just didn't, you know, change the atmosphere. I just ran the maps backwards. But if you look down near the bottom, that's <clears throat> those are weather systems coming off of Antarctica uh, that are passing by uh, near South America, you know, between... Antarctica and South America. Uh, look at this one here on this frame. You'll see the, a load that jumps off the coast there of Antarctica and moves into southern parts of uh, South America. Uh, in their winter, our summer, you'd see these lows uh, further to the north. We're, you know, we also in our minds, you know, every, you know thinking about like you, as you said, the cool air comes up from the south there right. as opposed to us. It's the, right. you know from the north. But in terms of the mindset. You know how how uh, it's kind of like how our body clocks are set in exactly. our minds to think uh, to have have it uh, high pressure have it be in reverse in high pre down there high pressure uh, the uh, winds blow around high pressure counterclockwise, counterclockwise. as opposed to clockwise so. correct all right let me let me fix let me fix my uh, page here and uh, get this down to the bottom I'd love to go to Australia I, I hope to go with, you know once in my life down there yeah Let's see what it's long yeah. flight. Um, Let's see. Yep. Uh, David Schwartz, uh, as, as you just said, Joe, low pressures, clockwise, high pressure, uh, counterclockwise. Uh, uh, Jake uh, uh, Grigo, you're asking me a specific question. When is it going to snow in Long Island? Island? I don't know. Two weeks from Wednesday at one ten. <laughs> okay. I, you know, I, I don't know how to answer that question. There's nothing. There's nothing except that you know, for tonight, if there's a couple of wet snowflakes and ice pellets mixed in. There doesn't seem to be anything in the cards until we get this this uh, pattern um, switched around, which it's going to do. It just it's, it, it requires uh, you know ten days to two weeks of patience uh, in order for us to get there. But uh, you know I couldn't tell you the date the date time and minute uh, at least not not uh, uh, at this point. Um, just running through. Um, Okay, if we're going to start talking about sun angles here, yeah. I'm going to start throwing people <laughs> off. All right? Okay, so, you know, I think this is a good time. I, I was thinking about this driving in. And by the way, before you get into this, today, happy perihelion to all of you. Today, actually, just after midnight tonight, the Earth in its orbit around the sun will be at its closest point to the sun. And a lot of people can't understand how is that possible in the wintertime. But again, distance from sun to Earth is not what plays into... The equation of the seasons. The seasons are based upon the tilt of the Earth's axis, but we actually, Joe, tonight are three million miles closer to the sun than we will be on the 4th of July, uh, or the aphelion point, if you will, in our orbit. But tonight we're closest to the sun, what we call perihelion. So happy perihelion to you all. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rick uh, points out, and correctly, uh, that uh, one of the jobs of hurricanes is to redistribute heat in the northern latitudes. Right. Correct. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the amount of excess heat in the atmosphere has to be released somehow. Again, another example of seeds being planted uh, where it gets to an excess and then the atmosphere has to let go. Right. And it let it lets go. It let it let goes. It lets go. Let, let, let go, sort of. As well. Whatever. This uh, is it releases it. This is, this is Mother Earth's way of getting, you know, and this happens with all of us, you know, especially all you moms out there who have spent the day with the kid and driving you crazy, and then toward the end of the day you just, ah! Yes. That's at the end of the summertime, the Earth, 
has to get find a way to get rid of all of that excess heat. It does so by way of a hurricane. A hurricane lets off let, the earth lets off steam, so to speak, lets off energy by getting rid of all of that surplus heat by creating the storm that we call a hurricane. And so it actually does a good job in doing that. The unfortunate part about it is is that we get in the way sometimes. Right. We, we build big luxury condominiums along coastal areas where the hurricanes like to gravitate to. Well, um, it, you know, you know. The, infra the building of the infrastructure has to be addressed. And we've right. talked about a number of times some of these uh, cities that flood, like Ellicott City in Maryland. Uh, apparently, when they, 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 the infrastructure that they built did not create a, a way for the natural draining to occur. Right. And, and as a result, they've had multiple hundred year floods there in the last right. in the last 10 years right uh, so that is important and anthony Orr is bringing up a, a point that i have said many times and he is correct as he asked the question how many inches of snow uh, on uh, january 19th on his driveway uh right, what is it right hand side only correct <laughs> those are the kind of questions that i get sometimes <laughs> and, it, and you and i both get them so we could say it now the folks that have been here with me for the last couple of years already know that we don't zip code forecast uh we don't um uh sun you know stuff like the sun angle uh the warm ground quote unquote uh is not subject matter that we usually address we'll talk about the sun angle in the middle of march because that's when it's relevant um We've only been 10 days. I know. It, you know, and it's just insane. You've got all these people that are all apparently, you know, weather experts who have already deemed winter being over, Joe. It just, it, it just, it's, it, it's the, again, it's the, the tantrum nature of it. Right, that, that, that's, and I've told people straight out, I said, you're not, what you're saying has absolutely nothing to do with science and everything that, to do with the fact that you're, you're acting like a five-year-old who didn't get his ice cream and you're throwing a temper tantrum. <laughs> I mean, basically, for all intents and purposes, from one month before to one month after the winter solstice, the sun is pretty much in the same, at the same angle above the horizon. I mean, yes, it is going higher now, now that we're past the winter. The winter solstice was, what, about what, 12 days ago. But still, generally speaking, in that two-month time frame from the 21st of November to the 21st of January, there really isn't all that much difference. This is the darkest period of the year, and we... Come in, and you'll begin to notice it to a degree after January 21st that the skies are beginning to lighten more uh, both in the morning and also in the evening uh, but uh, we're stuck now this is this is it and if you talk about sun angle now now versus 10 days ago or a few two weeks ago it's it's stupid <laughs> it, it really is I uh, yeah no I know it's going to come up soon on my Facebook huh? somebody's going to bring up the sun angle one of these days <laughs> and I'm going to lose my mind all right, uh, you know what, Joe? We did pretty good tonight. Fifty minutes. Uh, I think that's 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 pretty fair. Okay. Um, just trying to think. Is there anything you want to add? Off the top of my head, no. Uh, uh, it's a pattern that we'll uh, be living with for the next couple of weeks, as I said, as you said, and uh, we'll see what happens as we move toward the end of the month, and especially in the beginning. Is there a chance now? Did you mention that, or did it went over my head what? about Doctor uh, Doctor Cohen? No, I did me? say it. I, I'll say it again now. Uh, I did talk to speak to Dr. Cohen. Uh, he's going to join us one day next week. We just haven't worked out which day. I can tell you the one day it won't be. And that's next Thursday, which is the tenth, because we've got uh, oh, we've yes. got a party to, we to go our, to. We have our own little, so little, little celebration. We're going to have to work out a live stream schedule a little bit different that night, but we'll figure it out. So it will not be next Thursday, and I'm thinking it probably won't be Monday because. Uh, he asked me to get in touch with him on Monday, so and it can't be Friday unless you it does right because you're not here, so it's got to be, be Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm glad I wrote him a, me a message back saying any day next week is fine. <laughs> 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 so we're gonna we're gonna have him on uh, 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 one day next week. So I guess the best, the only two days it'll be could be either Tuesday or Wednesday, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm just kind of I'm, I'm trying to accommodate his schedule. So he'll let me he'll, he'll let me know um, you know if the, if that works for him if not we'll just figure out uh, another day to have him on because it looks like this is going to be a long duration uh, process so if we have to wait a few extra days well we got to wait a few extra, extra days. days for the cold anyhow yeah. all right so we're going to wrap it up at this point Joe and I will 
Uh, be back tonight, probably at about 9.20 on uh, Facebook, on my Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. So uh, you can tune back in and we'll uh, probably won't have too much new to say, but we'll have folks there that aren't on the YouTube, YouTube channel and we'll have some of the YouTube folks that uh, like to watch both. A lot of the regulars, they jump back and forth from both. And I really great. Much, there won't be much to see on the, the new uh, Foos Guidance or NAM uh, at 9 o'clock or 9.30, but uh, we'll look at it well, too. Well, we'll make it work for yeah. us. All right, folks, have a great night. Uh, and uh, if you're traveling around in parts of the Northeast, you know, with a coating to an inch or two of snow in some places as you go up into parts of New England and upstate New York, uh, just take it easy. You know, you might hit a few slick spots here and there. And uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Or later. Or later. Yeah.